This isn't about finding a supplement to boost it. It's quite the opposite. It's about doing what it takes to reduce it. It has so much effect on our central nervous system that it wreaks havoc on multiple sclerosis. <sighs> With so much devastation left behind, you would think more people would see this nasty effect. But I don't think many with MS even realize what's going on. It's one of the many things needed to stop MS progression and start making myelin. Hey, it's Dave. Histamine has a serious and widespread effect on the brain. High levels can be debilitating to MS, affecting every aspect on the quality of our life. Surprisingly, the histamine response in your brain can invoke profound effects on MS, which affects our mood, ability to concentrate, and overall brain function. The effects a histamine has on MS are not direct and not apparent right off the bat, but the link that living with high histamine has on your sleep, emotional imbalances and stress responses is profound. Histamine is an important neurotransmitter which has an influence on other neurotransmitters that have a direct effect on the ability to restore myelin. When histamine binds to receptors located in the central nervous system, it causes an excitatory effect, one which is amplified during periods of wakefulness. This means the histamine is independently overstimulating areas of our brain, which can destroy our ability to fall and to stay asleep. And less sleep means less myelin restoration. You know that histamine is responsible for wakefulness, I just told you. So there's no little wonder why too much histamine increases the risk of sleeplessness, which has the trickle down effect of wreaking havoc on our sleep. It's interesting to note that more than a half of all over the counter sleep aids contain a histamine receptor blocking agent to reduce the effects of histamine in sleep disorders. But overuse of those reduce their effectiveness in promoting sleep, especially deep and REM sleep when myelin promotion is highest. Studies have shown that sleep turns on genes known to play a part in the formation of myelin. Meanwhile, lack of sleep was linked with the activation of genes associated with cell stress and death. Through a little trial and error, I found a 72 hour cycle works best. This three-day cycle achieves both keeping, keeping my histamine levels low as well as consistently promoting the ability to fall into those deeper stages of sleep. I take a very common allergy pill called Diphenhydramine. It is sold on, on using many different names, usually having something to do with allergy relief or no, anything like that. It's over the counter and <laughs> it's dirt cheap. Let me know down in the comments 
Do you have trouble falling and staying asleep? Do you take an antihistamine as well? Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss a video. Until the next one.